I can still see Jesus standing at the top of the small hill, a natural depression in it. His words reverberate through the crowd, down the depression southward toward the edge of the Sea of Galilee, though he's only speaking slightly louder than a normal voice. The sky is bright blue, the few sea birds are silently circling overhead, and just as quiet as the birds are the thousands of people hanging on every word. Jesus is about to summarize many of his teachings into the greatest lesson ever heard. My name is Matthew, and I should know I was there. I memorized his words, and I wrote them down. According to Matthew, the early ministry of Jesus consisted of traveling through Galilee, teaching, preaching, healing every sickness and disease, and casting out demons. Consequently, this attracted large crowds from all over Israel. Matthew says that Jesus saw the crowds, went up on a mountainside, and delivered his most famous sermon. I met Paul long before this writing became well known. We had many long discussions about Jesus, but the very first thing Paul wanted from me was to teach him this lesson, word for word. Next to Gamaliel, my childhood teacher, Matthew has the best memory of any man I've ever known. When he started teaching me this lesson, I, I felt as if I were listening to Jesus himself. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when men shall denounce you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be very glad. For great is your reward in heaven, because they likewise persecuted the prophets which were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, it cannot be regained again. It is good for nothing but to be thrown out and to be walked on. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick, and it gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Don't think that I've come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one tiny punctuation mark shall pass from the law until all is fulfilled. Whoever breaks one of the least commandments and teaches others to do so, he will be the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, and except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said in the old days, you shall not kill, and whoever kills shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause will be in danger of the judgment. And whoever insults his brother will be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, will be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if you bring a gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go away. First be reconciled to your brother and come and offer your gift. Agree with your enemy quickly while you're with him unless he takes you to court then the judge delivers you to the officer and you go to prison. Truly, I say to you, you will by no means come out of prison until you've paid the last penny. <laughs> you have heard that it was said in the old days, you shall not commit adultery. 
But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman lustfully has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out, throw it away. For it is better for you that one of your body parts should perish than your whole body should be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better for you that one of your body parts should perish than your whole body be thrown into hell. It has been said that whoever shall divorce his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife, except for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries her that is divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said in the old days, you shall not make false oaths, but do for the Lord what you swear. But I say to you, don't make oaths at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither swear by your head, because you can't make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no, for whatever is more than these is of evil. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, don't resist evil actions, but whoever hits you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue you and take away your coat, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him that asks you, and don't turn away from him that would borrow of you. You have heard that it has been said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans do the same? And if you salute your brothers only, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the publicans do the same? Therefore, be perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Take heed that you do not give to charity before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when you do give to charity, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you give to charity, do not let your left hand know what your right hand does that your charity giving may be in secret, and your Father, which sees in secret, himself shall reward you openly. And when you pray, don't be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, enter into your closet, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father which is in secret. And your Father, which sees in secret, shall reward you openly. But when you pray, don't repeat yourself uselessly as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard by their many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what things you need before you ask Him. Pray like this. Our Father, which is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our errors as we forgive those who err against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their errors against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men their errors against you, neither will your Father forgive yours.